Welcome to another message from God's Word. We're studying the book of Revelation, and basically, in all reality, what we have here, from about 12th chapter onward, is Jehovah versus Islam, or Islam versus Jehovah. Islam is the only religion, basically, that has a great campaign trying to tell you that they don't believe what they believe. They haven't done what they have done. And they don't practice what they practice. Now, in their eschatology, we have the same story here. We have right here. In Herbert Lockyer's book, All the Parables in the Bible, on page 200 or 365, it talks about the beast in the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 18. It is a companion of the previous beast. The first beast is to head up everything in the political realm, and the second beast, everything in the religious realm. The lamb-like, this second beast has two horns, and is called the false prophet three times in Revelation 16, 13, 19, 20, and 20 and 10. His association with the dragon and the beast out of the sea brands him an evil person. The satanic trinity will be composed of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And in some mysterious way, the false prophet will be a miracle worker, causing fire to fall from heaven. His task will be to command the people to make an image of the beast and worship it. And all will be forced to bear the mark of the beast. Those refusing this brand of hell will be starved to death or killed. And we know that it's happened in the world all over in every, every Islamic nation that is in existence in the world. I don't care what they say. That's what's being done. Now, let's start 13 and verse 1. This, uh, and I saw out of the sea the Thalasse, a beast, with swift running, with speed and ease, killing machine. Coming up, having horns ten, and heads seven. And upon the horns of him, ten, the Mata. They of them, a crown won by force and butchery, and upon the heads of him names of blasphemy. Names of blasphemies. These are Satan's heroes, Satan's hall of fame. <clears throat> Standing against God, trying to kill God's people like Hitler did like Stalin did, like Charles Manson did, like many false prophets have done. Now, names of blasphemy. Matthew 24, 15, Daniel 9, 27, Daniel 12 and 11. 1 Timothy 3, 16, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 14. Let's go to 2, Tim 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 14. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 14. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 14, if I ever get there. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together on the MS rapture. That's right there in space and time. That you may not be quickly shaken from your composure and be disturbed by a spirit or a message, by the spirit or the message, basically, or the letter as if from us. 
to the effect that the day of the Lord has already come. Let no one in any way lead you astray, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. The greatest apostasy, two of the greatest apostasies were the Catholic Church. That began in 325 A.D., and Islam that began about 320 something A.D. is when he began to start. He died in 632 A.D. All during this period of time, now there has been mass murder in in the name of religion all the way down through here, and we have studied some of this. The apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness has revealed the son of destruction to oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God our object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God do you not remember that while I was still with you and telling you these things and you know what restrains him now so that in his time that he may be revealed the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and only he that now restrains shall be able and until restrains until he's taken out of the way. And then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth, and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, the energizing of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders. And with all deception, wickedness for those who perish because they do not receive the love of truth as to be saved. For this reason God will send upon them deluding influence so that they might believe what is false. Believe a lie and be damned in order that they all may be judged who do not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. But we always give thanks to God for you, brethren. Beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you out from the, from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith and truth. It is for this reason he called you through our gospel, that you might gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That evil one that displays himself above every God, Muhammad, when he received his so-called vision up there in that cave above Mecca. When he first saw the vision, he thought he was demon-possessed. Went down and told his wife, Gehijah, that, that cover him, cover him, that a demon had followed him, that he was going to be one of the great poets. Because they believed that, well, if you study Arabic history of the Arabs, you'll find that they wrote a poet about, poem about everything that happened to them. All their enemies, all their loves, everything was a poem. Now, they said the greatest poets were all demons possessed. And he believed that he was going to be one of the great demons that possessed poets. And his wife told him, I think you've been visited by an angel. And she said, now, do you still see the demon? Is he in the room? And she said, he said, yes. So she uncovered one of her thighs, and he said, is he still here? And he said, yes. She uncovered her other thigh, and she said, is he still here now? And she said, yes. And then she disrobed herself completely, and she said, is he still here now? And he said, no. Well, that's proof that the angel Gabriel came to you, and that you are now an apostle, a prophet of God. And you're going to have a new religion. Now remember, before Muhammad was on the scene, there was a guy by the name of Zayed. And he carried on what was called Zayedism. And what he was going to do is try to take everybody back to the religion of Abraham. He had gone among the Christian cults. He should have gone among Christianity. But he went among the Christian cults and didn't believe them because they all just disagreed about everything. And then he studied Judaism and he didn't think that was right. It was only a way of life and not a religion. And Muhammad listened well. And he began to 
imitate what Zayat had said before, along with embellishments. Now we're going to see this beast come forth in a minute. And then we'll describe the beast of Islam. Now Islam says <coughs> that in the last times that the Mahdi, which will be a direct descendant from Muhammad through his daughter, Fatima, will be born in a world, and he's going to come from Syria. And this prophet, this Mahdi, Mahdi, this Mahdi, will lead the people in truth. And he will be a reluctant prophet as his ancestor Muhammad was, and that many nations will swear allegiance to him like they did to Muhammad. He will go out to conquer, conquering to conquer, as in Revelation 6 chapter, on that white horse. Bringing in peace to the world, he will make a treaty, by the way the Islamic scriptures say that this Mahdi, this Antichrist, will reign for seven years and that he will build a temple in Jerusalem and that he will move the Kaaba stone from Mecca to Jerusalem. That he will make a temporary treaty, a Hudnah, with Israel. And there will be a beginning, a time of peace in the first part of this tribulation. But then all of a sudden, he will turn. And this is what he's going to do. Now, the Mahdi is going to have a helper. He's called the Beast. And the Beast will come out of Arabia. And here is the description of Muhammad tells of you. He had, you, we will see the description of the Beast in the book of Revelation, which is symbolic. Muhammad's description of his Beast goes way beyond that description tremendously. He said this beast will come out of the sands of the sea. Arabia. The ocean of the sands. The sea of sand. He will have the head of a bull. The ears of an elephant. The eyes of a pig and the horns of a sack. He'll have the front end shoulders of a lion. He's going to have the rump of a calf. He will have the tail of a ram and will be the color of a tiger and he will have the legs of a camel and the neck of an ostrich. What a description. Can you imagine? Outrageous. The Bible talks in symbolic language. Boy, this is He's just trying to outdo Jehovah, that's all. Out through the Jehovah the Bible with his description of this beast. And this beast will mark every true believer of Islam with the title of their Sahadagarim. There is no God but all of them. There is no God including Jehovah. But Allah and Mahavan is his messenger and apostle and prophet. Jesus wasn't. Jesus is not the Son of God. Jesus didn't die on the cross of Calvary. There is no way to heaven through Jesus. Only Muhammad's truths, as they say. The Holy Quran is actually called the generous Quran, literally in Arabic, the generous Quran. They call it the Holy Quran because of the Holy Bible. Now you tell me what's holy in that book of murder, lies and cheating and stealing and rape and whatever. It says over and over in there, God has no companion. All of, there is no God while all, and he has no companion, he has no son. He has no descendant, but God from Genesis 3.15 said that the seed of the woman shall come forth and redeem mankind. 
by his blood. Muhammad wants you to die for him. God of the Bible, Jehovah, died for you. Jesus is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. I'll choose Jehovah any day over Catholicism, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormonism, Catholicism, Islam, whoever. Mary Baker, Eddie. All of these things that play Jesus down, all of them play Jesus down and make him not quite God. Arius of Alexandria did that and said he was subservient. He was a created being subservient to the Father and not equal to the Father. The Bible says the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all co-equal and all God. And all of them took part in your salvation, but the Son died and shed his literal blood for you. Many diadems upon the heads of him and names of blasphemy. What could be more blasphemous? than to say Jesus is not the Son of God. That Jehovah is not God. What could be more blasphemous? Now let's look at this description of this beast. And the beast which I saw, he kept on being like a leopard. Compared to a leopard, a stealthy, vicious, nocturnal creature. Graceful to stalk and kill. That symbolism that is a metaphor, it's an allegory of how this person will be. He's not going to be a leopard. But he's going to be like that. He's not going to have a neck of an ostrich and, a, and the head of a bull and the ears of an elephant and the eyes of a pig and the horns of a stag and the legs of a camel and 20 feet between the joints. And the feet of him, like a bear, I'm going to tell you something, one of the most terrible strength, terrible, ferocious, powerful things is the claws of a bear, especially a grizzly bear. Now, up in these hills, we have bears. Right along here, right down here in this last week, there was a bear walked down to the community center down there in the center of Fish Lake Valley, probably come down out of Patterson Creek. A bear can come up to your car with the doors locked and can reach in there and get his claws and rip that door off its hinges. Powerful. That's the way this, this thing is going to be powerful. Like the claws, the feet, the talons of a bear. And the mouth of him as a stoma leontos. As a mouth of a lion. Lion means sharp eyes. Because they see in the night. Cat see in the night. Crushing jaws. The tongue of a lion can rip the flesh off of you, literally. A lion's tongue, a cat's tongue, your little house cat's tongue, has thorns on it, on the back of the tongue. A cat will comb himself or herself with this, with these thorns, and that's how come they get this hairball sometimes. Have to spit it out. Oh, a lion. Those thorns are like ice picks. And if they lick the flesh of an animal, it literally will lick it off the bone and just sever it from the bone. Just like a meat grinder. The mouth of a lion. And he gave to him the dragon gave to this beast. The power, the dynamis. That's where we get our word dynamite from, right? this word dynamite. The power of him and the throne of him. Satan is going to rule this earth for a short time. During this period of time. Tribulation of grace. And authority. Great. That means unlimited power. The Antichrist will set upon the throne of Satan and have his seal of authority. Now, the beast that took Muhammad from Mecca 
to the farthest mosque, which was Jerusalem, which wasn't a mosque there at that time period, and not a temple of Solomon either, as it says in the writing. Hadn't been there. Took him to Jerusalem. He met all the prophets and made all the prophets obey Muhammad because he was the best prayer of all of them. He could stretch out and he could pray better than all of them. Prostrate himself. Took him up in the seventh heaven. And this beast that took him, this beast, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 describe him to the teeth of what Muhammad saw. Now he probably borrowed from the Bible in those places. And then the, and yet the, uh, the the, the adherents to Muslim, Islam will say, well, Muhammad couldn't read. So what? They didn't have Arabic Bibles. And people repeated the Bible and sat around like it did in early America over here. People didn't have rub televisions and they didn't have radios. They sat around and told stories and read the Bible or memorized the Bible. People would go to churches, go to little town meetings, little, little centers. And the people would stand up and recite poetry. They recite the Bible. They recite all kinds of poetry for entertainment at those days. And where did Muhammad go on his very first trip? He went to Damascus, Syria, where the strongest stronghold of Christianity was at that time and Christendom. Don't ever get Christendom. Mistake, don't ever mistake Christendom for Christianity. Christendom, name is the name of Christ as Islam does, one of the monotheistic religions, so-called. Catholicism names the name of Christ, but they take away his power and give it to Mary. Jehovah Witnesses name Jehovah, but they say that he is not God, because Jehovah is Jesus. Mormons, he's their older brother. Grandfather. He is the only way to the heaven, the only way to paradise. He's not a way, he is the way to God and the only way. And one out of the heads of him as having been slain. One out of the heads of him as having been slain. Unto death. And the stroke, the plague of the death of him, it was healed. And it wandered after him all the earth, the earth, the whole earth, she wandered after the beast. Now that's a hyperbole, because the whole earth did not because there are some Jews there that aren't, aren't Islamic believers, and there are Christians that are going to believe in Christ that aren't. But mass, and the mass of whole, yes, they are. Now, on March the 3rd in 1922, I want you to go back to the empires that ruled the Middle East and name them all. We have the Medo-Persian, the Babylonian, the Babylonians and the Medo-Persian. Then we have Alexander the Great. Then we have the Roman Empire, which was the Fifth Empire. Now, the Fifth Empire is the Roman Empire. The sixth empire to rule the Middle East is not Rome, but is Islam, the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire run all the way into Europe and for 300 years ruled part of Europe. In the Spanish homes today, they have what they call Spanish roofs and Spanish style uh, architecture. That is not Spanish, that is Islamic. That's Ottoman. The tile roofs and all those gardens and everything come right straight out of the Middle East. The Spanish style homes in your neighborhood are not Spanish style. That's Ottoman. That's Islamic. The tile, the fountains in the middle, the, the, the gated, gated gardens, it's all out of the Middle East. The tile. Mosaic, all out of the Middle East. They went into Europe. Now this beast, one of the heads, 
as having been slain unto death, the stroke of death. And of him it was healed. Now ISIS is saying that they are the resurrected Islamic empire of Muhammad. That's why they're doing the things they do. That's true Islam. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 14, as we read before, Matthew 24, 25, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, all of this tells you about this beast. Now remember, this is a this is he's going to do a messianic, messianic miracles. Satan is going to give him power to do this. He's going to raise the dead here. He's going to raise this dead empire. And of course, Islam says that the Mahdi will be the very incarnation of Muhammad. The spirit of Muhammad, his soul will be in this Mahdi. And the beast and the false prophet Isa, which is Jesus. Now their purpose according to Islam, not according to me, but their purpose according to Islam is to go out and kill all the swine, number one, and kill all the Jews, and then kill all the Christians, and bring the whole world unto Islam. That no man will work, buy, sell, or trade without the permission of this Islamic empire, the political, governmental, and yet somewhat religious entity. That's Catholicism once. Islam to this day has to their credit or to their damnation killed 270 million people in the name of Muhammad and Jihad. The only way a Muslim can go to heaven is to die in Jihad. And then he goes there and he has 72 virgins and he gets to be an assessor, takes 72 of his family members to heaven. He's a redeemer. Then he gets to go to heaven, otherwise he gets to go to hell for a while. And they worship the dragon. They worship the dragon through this beast, through this antichrist, through this false prophet, the unholy trinity. Now the trinity, we, we worship one God. That one God manifests himself in the, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We shall never see the Father, but we shall see Jesus. Jesus is the external expression of the God. The Holy Spirit is that not just a force, but that person of the Godhead which energizes all things. In my native language, Lakota, I'm an Indian. I'm Cherokee, Chickasaw, Rural Dakota, Santee Dakota, and Ojibwe, Chickasaw. In Lakota, the name for the father is Wakan Tonka. The name of the son is Tonka Shiva. The name of the spirit is Skan Taku Skan Skan. Every time an Indian kills an animal, he thanks God for that animal's life that he took to sustain him. He respects that animal. And every day that he prays to God, he respects the God that causes all things to live and produce. Skam taku skam skam. Here we have a, a hellish religion that portrays itself as a religion of peace. They say Islam means peace. I heard Condoleezza Rice say that. I heard Barack Obama say that. I heard George Bush say that. I heard Bill Clinton say that. I never heard Donald Trump say that. Yeah. Islam does not mean peace. It means surrender. It means surrender. And there will be no peace until everyone surrenders. 
And he gave to him the authority of the beast, and they worshipped. They followed after the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Thirteen and verse five. Hope you're following along. If you're listening today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you better do it because you know what? In the in the blink of an eye, the rapture can take place, and you can be in the middle of this mess. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. I want to be on Jesus' side before, not after. The greatest revival that's going to take place is probably after the rapture. But these people are going to die. They're going to starve to death. They're going to freeze. They're going to burn up. Where we are today, was it hot? Was it cold? What if you hardly had enough clothes to keep you warm? Or some kind of air conditioning or some place you could go to cool off? No water to drink. No food to eat. Because you won't be knee, bend the knee and say, Shahada Kabron. There is no God but all. He has no messenger. Or he has no companion. And Muhammad is his messenger. If you don't say that, you won't eat. And then, when you say that, you're in the Islamic army right now. Now you've got to perform jihad and you've got to go kill everybody else. Muhammad said that anyone that won't perform jihad and go to war for Allah needs to have his head severed. If anyone denounces Islam, they shall die. They'll give a chance, chance to say, well, maybe I was messed up in my head when I did that or whatever. But if they will not repent, of denouncing Islam, they shall not. And that's in the world today, not tomorrow. Slavery is still alive and well in Islam, even though the oh well, well the black people, you know, they're in the in the prison telling all the black people we we everybody's saying, but Islam has slaves today. The only country in the world, the only religion, the only religio religio political system that accepts slavery as okay. A Muslim man can have four legal wives and all the concubines, all the sex slaves that he can afford. And that's going on all over the world. And here in this country also. The old, old story. Cunning, deceptive, and crap. And it was given to him the mouth. Ability to speak well and to captivate an audience in Daniel 8, 23-25. Like a serpent in the garden. Hush, the hush, the hush. Whispering in her ear. That's good to eat. It's going to make you wise. Bringing peace to the world and yet it's bringing war to the world. And speaking great things and blasphemy, insults to God, defaming, slandering God. Defamation. Blasphemary. Charafa. To cut. To expose. To defame. The negate. And it was given to him authority, exousia, unlimited power, for a while to make months forty and two, to make, to work out his plans, to bring things into harmony with his plans. Our word poem comes out, poese. And when he does this, he's going to 42 months, three and a half years. Three and a half years during this period of time. 
two three and a half year period. The first three and a half years is a somewhat semi quasi peace, and the last is hell on earth. Satan's mouthpiece, Satan's Hall of Fame, Satan's heroes. And he opened up the mouth of him in blasphemy toward the God, Jehovah, Elohim, El Shaddai. And to blaspheme, to derail the name of him and the tabernacle of him. The ones in the heaven, tabernacling, dwelling. Daniel 11, 36 through 99. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. Daniel 11, 20 through 28. Revelation 7, 15, 12 and 12. Number 7. Satan gives the Antichrist and the unholy trinity the power to make war. Satan's Hall of Fame. Satan's cohorts. Satan's heroes. And it was given to him to make war. Polemo. With the saints. And to conquer them. Five out of every six people in the world will die during this period of time. Every Gentile. Five out of six Gentiles. That means you had this many, now you got that many. And two out of every three Jews, and that's that many. Left one third. One sixth and one third are going to be left. Thirteen of verse eight. Now I'm translating this from Greek, and we're going to talk about the worship of the beast. The worship of the beast. The worship. They go to Mecca today on their pilgrimage, and they go there and they walk seven times around that stone in the middle, and that stone is a meteorite. But according to them, it is the right hand of Allah. And they go and they walk around there and they touch the stone. And that stone absorbs all of their sins. That's the only way that their sins are commuted. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father or paradise or heaven except by me. And Muhammad wants to replace him. Matter of fact, Muhammad shares the names of all of them. Who would name a child the glorious one? Well, that's Muhammad, the glorious one. And they shall willingly worship him, all the ones dwelling upon the earth. And here is another hyperbole, because we know that one-sixth of them won't, at least, and one-third of the Jews won't. Here we have another hyperbole, a figure of speech. And the ones dwelling upon the earth, and not, it has been written the name of him in the scroll of life, of the Lamb, the one having been slain from the foundation of the cosmos, of the universe. Except anyone he has an ear to hear. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him listen. This is not written to the churches. All during the church age it says, to the churches. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We're not talking about the churches. The churches are glorified with Christ, and they're the bride of Christ, and they're in heaven, feasting and reigning in that very feast of heaven. But down upon this earth, these are the words that will be spoken there. The church is God. The Holy Spirit as the comforter and the leader of the church is gone. The Holy, still, will still, Holy Spirit will be still convicting men's hearts, sin, righteousness, judgment to come. Verse number 10. If anyone unto captivity, unto captivity he goes. If anyone with a sword to be killed, he is going to be killed with a sword. And here is the patience of the faith. 
The faith. The faith in Jesus still. The faith in God. And the Holy Saints. Through true justice will last forever. This is a absolute perversion of justice. Sharia law. Sharia law. Everything in a Muslim's life is ordered. Psychologists say that Muhammad was obsessive compulsive disorder. There are 70 rules for going to the bathroom. You can't do anything in the Islamic world without there being a rule for it. You can't make love to your wife, you can't eat, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't do anything without Muhammad having laid down rules for it. And the Islamic scholars say, oh well, that shows how weak your Christian religion is. We got a rule for everything. Your religion is just believe in God and Jesus and to go do what you want to do. We have a rule for everything. A perfect system. And every government, every constitution of every nation, wherever they go, they try to supplant it with Sharia law. They will not obey and conform to the laws of nations. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and it kept on having horns, too, like a lamb. And he kept on speaking as a dragon. Here we have the false Christ. The false Christ. The one that looks like Jesus. The one that uses his name. But he is a dragon. Three and twelve. The Antichrist begins to wield his religious authority over all of the earth. And the authority of the first beast. And all that he does and works before him. And he makes the earth and the ones in it, in her, a dwelling place. One down, one down dwelling, down homing. In order that they shall worship and fall down and bend the knee and obeisance to the beast, the first, of which it was cured. And who is this? This is the Islamic Empire. You shall pray like Muhammad taught you to pray, or you won't live. And the plague of the death of it. They don't have faith in God. They have faith in Muhammad. And Muhammad has given so much obedience that you cannot even slander his name in any of these countries where they are. It is a death sentence. If you become a Christian, you can't have an open Christianity in these churches, in these countries. Islam does not allow you freedom of religion, freedom of thought, or freedom of practice or freedom of speech in these countries. Thank God we got it a little bit here left. Because it's by the thanks of God that we do. The beast begins to show great powers and miracles and misleading people by outward supernatural signs and causing them to adhere to his hellish religion. And he performs Samuel signs great in order that also a fire that may come down, he most may cause to come down out of heaven just like Elijah did. And to come down unto the earth, down in the presence of humankind. Jesus promised great signs to his disciples. Jesus did great signs for one reason, to prove he was the Messiah. And this deceptive prophet is doing these signs to prove that it is he has the power of all of them. Miracle work. And he leads astray. He leads out of the pathway the ones dwelling upon the earth. Because the signs, because of the signs which he is, is given to him to do. 
before the presence of the beast and saying to the ones dwelling upon the earth to make an icon, an idol. What is that Kaaba? What is the Kaaba? It's an idol. Oh, they say we don't worship idols. The Kaaba is an idol. It's an idol. It's a fallen stone. Venus. All of the Roman and Greek culture worshipped fallen, what we call asteroids or meteorites. And so did this. <clears throat> so did these Arabs. Demon worshippers. To make an icon to the beast, and has the, it has the power of the blow of death. It had been killed, but yet it died. March the 3rd, 1922, that Islamic Empire fell, but now it's going to raise again. <coughs> and it was given to him to give the spirit of breath to the icon of the beast and order that. And remember what this icon, this beast is. This is a world system. This is a government. They might speak the image of the beast and they might make In order that as many accept, they might worship, they might bend the knee to the image of the beast, or they shall be killed. Verse 16, and he makes all men, the ones small and the ones great, and the ones rich and the ones beggars, and the ones free and the ones slaves, see there's slavery in Islam. All civilized nations have done away with this thing. In order that they shall give to them the mark upon the hand, the right side of them, and upon the forehead of them. Today, when you see jihadists, wherever they are, they will have a banner on their head and on their arms. And it will say, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Man-made religion. Man, man, man. Verse 17. In order that anyone, he may be possible to buy or to sell. No one is going to buy or to sell except the one having the mark of the name of him, of the beast, and the number of of the name of him, the authority of the number of his name. There is no God but Allah. He has no companion. Muhammad is his messenger. That is the authority of Islam. Hakaran. Here is the wisdom. The one having reason, let him count the number of beasts. The, num well, the number of man it is, and the number of him is 666. Our Heavenly Father would send this message out. If there's one out there in this one listen to this message, I pray that you convict their sin, their lives of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. That they will ask you and beg you for forgiveness. That they'll realize that everything in that Quran that is good is bad in your word. And that they have been led astray by a fiendish religion that's killed over 270 million people and going strong and it shall kill five out of every six people in this world and two out of every three people. Father, forgive us for the I pray for all of those out there that you would encourage them, that you would give them strength and, and that you, they'll be brave because either we're going to be heroes or victims during this time we live in today. We must stand and and fight for our freedoms to speak and the freedom of prayer, and the freedom of speech in the world. Help us not to be Sharia compliant. Help us always to be able to preach your word as it says. Not be afraid to say that Jesus is the Son of God. Father, please, I beg you to use this message for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.